What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video we're going to be looking at USB charging cables. In particular, I'm going to look at how cable quality affects charge rate. So I have a few different cables here, I have one that you might buy on eBay for like 99 cents. I have a few of higher quality cables, and we're, we're going to compare it against a couple of OEM cables as well. So in this video we're only going to be charging at 5 volts, I just want to let you guys know that. We're not going to be utilizing technologies like this Quick Charge 2.0 or Quick Charge 3.0. I have another video on that, but that does affect charge rate quite a bit, and you can watch that video as to how it does affect it, but it modifies voltage buses away from 5 volts, so it goes up to 9 volts or 12 volts, and because we're running higher voltage levels in those uh, quick charge scenarios, even cheap little uh, cables like this 99 cent eBay one will perform rather well under those conditions, but not all devices support that, and it's not as universal, so we're going to be looking at 5 volt charging only in this video. So without any further ado, let's hook these cables up and see how they perform. Alright guys, so for this video I'm going to be using this Samsung Galaxy charging adapter. I'm not sure which phone it came with. So it is a 5 volt adapter. This is not their newer 5.3 volt adapter. Uh, I explained that in my other video, but essentially what they did was later on they came out with 5.3 volt adapters um, to uh, compensate for the voltage drop across the cable. It would help uh, so there wasn't as much loss and so they could push a little bit more current through that cable. But this is the older 5 volt adapter, but a lot of chargers still utilize 5 volts. They don't have that extra 5.3 or 5.2 volts or whatever it is. So we're going to be using this. It also has the ability to put up to 2 amps out, so that's good for this. I didn't want to use a 1 amp adapter because that would be our bottleneck. We want to make sure that our bottleneck is in our cable, not in our adapter. So this guy has the ability to put out 2 amps. And so to measure the current, we're going to use one of these little USB current meters here. It's not incredibly accurate. It's not like we're hooking it up to a fluke or anything, but I didn't want to get too advanced for this. It doesn't need to be that accurate. All that matters is about that we get down to about tenth of an amp. So this thing reads down to a hundredth of an amp, but I'm not sure how accurate it is uh, in, in that decimal place. But tenth of an amp, I feel this thing could measure uh, pretty well. So that's all that really matters for this. So I have three devices here. I have my LG V10. I have the Nexus 7. And this is the the 2013 model or whatever the hell it is. And then this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank. Now I have these three devices because they all have different current draws. I will say in particular, I have noticed this before, the LG V10, not all phones, but the LG V10 in particular, and some fo other phones may be like this, it is very, very picky about voltage drops. If it does not have 5 volts at its USB port, it will drastically draw or drop its current draw. It will not draw nearly as much current. Some devices are not as picky on this, and that's why I also have this battery bank. I think it'll be the least picky. It won't care probably if we feed it if the voltage drops down to as low as 4.5 volts. So we have three different devices here. That's going to depend on your actual device. Some devices are, they work in more voltage ranges and they will be, they will be better equipped to handle that voltage drop. Uh, some Samsung devices I've noticed are handle voltage drops pretty well. So if you use thinner gauge cables, they might actually be able to squeeze more current out of it. But this LG V10 is very picky about that. So to start, we're going to use this as the standard. So I'm going to actually, we're going to use uh, the current meter through a very short, this is a thick gauge wire. So this has a 20 gauge wire inside this USB cable right here. And the meter itself also has 20 gauge wire in it. So rather thick charging cable, so we're going to have the minimal drop through this setup. And I'm going to feed that into this uh, battery bank here, and that will tell us the maximum amount of current we can really expect to see here. And that can show you the real true potential of this, this setup that we have here, just to show you pretty much the maximum amount. And then we'll tra transfer that to the tablet and then the phone. And then from there, we'll know uh, the ba about the maximum current that these devices will draw, because this is really the, the lowest resistance setup we can get here. And then from there, We'll use that as the, the standard as we go onto these other cables and see how they perform compared to this setup. This right here is going to deliver the most amount of power possible. It's got the shortest length and it has the largest gauge wire. So uh, let's look at these three devices and see how much current they'll draw with this setup. Also, before I begin, I just want to say that the, the battery levels on these are all around 50%, so they all should take a significant amount of current. It's not like they're charged up to like 80-90%. They all should have a, a, re, a reasonable current draw. It would be just about as much current as if they were all the way dead, so it's not like they're pretty much all the way charged up. This here is at about 50%. Uh, this tablet here is at 54%. I'll just show this to you guys just so I don't get any heat for this. It's at 54%. I don't know if you can see that. And my phone is at, oh, it's at 55%. 
I swear it just jumped from like 50% to 55%, but I don't know what happened there, but it's still low enough to do this, so it's good enough to go. So I just want to show you guys the battery level so I don't get any heat on that, so you guys don't say that my phones or, or my devices here are like 90% charged and that's why they're not drawing current. So we're going to start with my LG V10 here. Let's go ahead and plug it in, get it going, and for some reason, uh, this phone and a lot of other phones I've noticed charge faster with the screen off. They will not use the, they will not run the full charge rate until the screen is off. So with that, let's look at the actual charge rate here. So for the LG V10, we're running 5.35 volts. So a lot of these will be the same voltage. So I guess this thing actually does put out 5.3 volts, and it's running about 1.64 to 1.65, 1.67 amps. So we'll just call it 1.6, 1.7 amps. So that is the maximum amount of current that we would be able to get through this LG V10 with this setup. All right. So now let's go ahead and disconnect that, and I'm going to go ahead and hook up the Nexus 7. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. All right, and I'll turn the screen off just to be fair, and let's go ahead and look at the charge rate on this. So 5.27 volts, so uh, about the same voltage, 5.3 we could just say, and the current is down to 1.12 amps. So the current on the, the Nexus 7 doesn't really draw as much current, and it used to draw more. I think they gave it a software update a while back that doesn't allow it to draw as much current. I don't like that because it used to charge faster. I think it was a software update that did that, but... I don't know, it's just never seemed to charge as fast as it used to, and I've noticed this for a while now. But So it's charging at 1.12 amps, so that's about the maximum amount of current we're going to be able to push into this, this Nexus 7 here. And last, let's hook up this battery bank. Now the reason I included a battery bank is because this thing will be the least picky for voltage drops. It will draw probably the most current out of all these. It's a power hog, and it will just take all this voltage and just pretty much send it right into the battery because these other devices are a little bit more picky. They have, they don't have as wide of a voltage range that they can accept. So when that voltage starts to drop through that cable, they start to reduce their current to keep that voltage high enough so that it's usable. This device won't care as much. It has a little bit more of a wide voltage range, and even if it does have a voltage drop, it will still take as, as pretty much the same amount of current as long as it doesn't drop too, too low. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this thing in. Let's see what it does. So let's plug it in. It's charging there. And let's see the current on this. So it's running at 5.38, almost 5.4 volts, so the voltage has gone up. So it looks like this, this uh, Samsung brick here actually bumps up that voltage a little bit when that current uh, draw starts to really come in. So that's something I've noticed at least. And uh, 1.78 amps is what we're doing. So almost close to 1.8 amps. So that's close to the 2 amp maximum that this Samsung brick will actually put out. And most uh, charging USB charging bricks never actually put out what they say their maximum rating is. They put out close to that, but I've never seen a 2 amp brick put out exactly 2 amps. So uh, this device here is drawing 1.78 amps. So like I said, this will be this device will draw the most current out of all of them, and it'll be the, the most accepting of these voltage drops across these cables. So let's go ahead and look at this now on some other cables. All right, so now that we know the maximum potential of all these devices, how much current they really can draw, let's look at how much they draw through these other cables. So I have this little cheap uh, cable that I bought on eBay. Again, you can buy these for like 99 cents, and a lot of them will look like this. They'll be like this uh, like braided cable, and they look all nice. They look really nice. I mean, it looks great, but the problem is, and I'll just give you guys kind of a, a close-up of this so you guys can see this cable. The problem is there's really thin wire gauge, and I don't even like the feel of this cable, really. It just feels kind of like hard. Like, it feels like if you bend it, like, it like keeps that, you know, I don't know. I, it just feels like almost like solid wire in here. I know it's not, but it feels like that. So these cables I tell you to watch out for on eBay. I mean, you'll see why. The, the charge rate of these cables is just horrid. You'll see that. So let's go ahead and hook this cable up, and let's see how it charges these devices. So I'm also, I'm not too sure of the, uh, the wire gauge in here, but I can tell you it's really thin. They didn't say it in the actual auction, but a lot of these little cheap cables will have thin wire. If they don't say the actual uh, wire gauge in the auction, then be wary of that. I would search for, if you're going to buy a cable, make sure it has the wire gauge in the auction. Search for 24, 22, or 20 gauge cable. So let's hook it up here. And it doesn't even want to doesn't even want to charge. There it goes. So it's charging. And let's look at the charge rate of this cable. So we're doing 5 point... Oh, just dropped there. This cable is really finicky as well, but it's doing 5.14 volts. Uh, 0.22 amps right now, so that's like 200 milliamps. Uh, it was doing 0.4 uh, amps a second ago. 
I don't know what the deal with it is, but as you can see, it's significantly less current. This is a uh, 0.2 amps, so that is like, I don't know what we were doing before, but I think it was like 1.6 amps. So this is one eighth of the current that we were doing before. This is probably like as much power as my phone draws when it's like idling. So it's not really gonna charge the phone very much. So now let's go ahead and try this Nexus 7. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. And we'll look at the charge rate on the screen. So it looks like we're doing about 0.64 amps on this. So that's that's a lot better than the LG V10. Like I said, this the LG V10 is not very tolerant for those voltage drops. So we're doing about 0.64 amps, 5.23 volts. So it's still uh, significantly less than the previous charge rate, about half of the previous charge rate. So this cable uh, has effectively at least halved our previous charge rate on uh, this tablet. And it's about 1 sixth or 1 eighth or whatever it was on the LG V10. So, uh, it's definitely charging a lot slower on this cable here. And lastly, let's go ahead and check out this battery bank. So, like I said, this will probably still utilize this cable the most. It's not as susceptible to those voltage drops, so let's go ahead and plug it in and see how much current it pushes through this uh, wire. So it's about 0 0.67, 0 0.68, 0 0.69, 0 0.7. So I'd say it's about 0.7 amps, so just about the same amount as that uh, Nexus 7. So. So this is still significantly less than the current we were running before. Remember before we were running about 1.8 amps, close to 1.8 amps through this charging bank, and now we're doing 0.7 amps. So it's a, it's a lot less uh, current through this uh, cable here. So I would say that's enough to conclude that these cheap cables off eBay are definitely not worth it. I wouldn't uh, waste your money on them. I mean, they're they're good for like, if you just want to hook it up to your computer to like do, you know, maybe a music sync or something like that, it's all right. But if you're actually buying this to charge your phone, it will charge significantly slower. And also I noticed the connectors on them wear out a lot faster. And it's just overall definitely a lower quality cable. And that wire gauge in there is so thin that the losses are just so so large that your cave, your your device will charge significantly slower, at least half in the best case. So now we're gonna test this uh, OEM cable. This is what came with my Nexus 7. So this is the Nexus 7 OEM cable. So let's see how this guy sizes up. So let's go ahead and plug in the LG V10 and it's got a good solid connection, turn the screen off. So it looks like we're doing 0.89 amps, so about 0.9 amps, I would say, which isn't too bad. Uh, it'll charge the phone, but it'll still be rather slow. It's not, it's not as good as it was before, where we had that about 1.6 amps going through with that thick, uh, thicker gauge cable. So it is uh, significantly better than that other cheap cable that we got off eBay, but it's not, uh, it's not as good as it could be, so it's kind of in between. All right, so now let's go ahead and test it out on the actual Nexus 7. So this is the device it was actually made for. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Go ahead and turn the screen off. And let's check out the charge rate. So we're doing about 1.12 amps. So it's exactly the same as what it was before with our thicker gauge cables and our shorter cables. So it's not really doing, uh, it's doing as good as this, as this tablet will accept. So this tablet won't really take any more current than this anyway. So it's charging, uh, it's charging at the full charge rate of this tablet, its capabilities. Lastly, let's go ahead and check it out on this power bank. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in and we'll check out the charge rate. So we're doing about 1.7 amps. So close to what that original cable was doing. So as you can tell, the OEM cables have a, a uh, thicker uh, gauge wire for those power wires. Um, even though it might not look too thick, if you compare it to some other USB cables, it's not really too thick. But it's just that not all four wires are thick. Really, uh, all you need, your data wires don't really need to be very thick. It's just your power wire. So it probably has two thicker power wires in here. And as you can tell, it's doing uh, very well with this battery bank. And so generally the OEM cables that you get with your devices are actually very good cables and they will give you uh, the best charge rate that your, your device will accept. So they will typically give you your maximum charge rate anyways. Uh, that's, not necessary, that's not necessarily true for other devices. So just because this OEM cable works best on the Nexus 7, it doesn't necessarily work best on the LG V10. So your OEM cable will work best uh, for the device that it comes with. And generally they're higher, they're, they are of higher quality cable and they have a, a good size wire gauge in there. So the OEM cables are overall a good cable. And so lastly, I just wanna look at this uh, other cable which I bought on eBay. So not all cables on eBay are bad. Again, you gotta look for it. You gotta know what you're looking for on eBay. Um, 
I would definitely, if you're going to search for a cable, make sure you search for a uh, wire gauge too. When you when you type in your search for the cable, search you know micro USB cable, uh, 20 20 AWG or 22 AWG or something like that. Make sure you get a thick wire gauge. Um, so the the higher the gauge number, the thinner the wire is. So you actually want a lower wire gauge. It's kind of opposite, but a 20 gauge wire is thicker than a 22 gauge wire. Anyways, this is a Tron Smart Cable, which I purchased on eBay. Not too sure about this brand. I don't know who they are or anything about them, but they advertise it as a 20-gauge cable, and these cables have worked very well in every circumstances which I've used them. So they work very well with every device which I've used them with. So definitely it makes a big difference if you buy a cable which advertises that 20 or 22-gauge wire, uh, power-carrying wires, in the actual cable. It's definitely a thicker cable, so we'll look at it compared to these other cables. So it's definitely larger than all three of these cables, as you can tell, even this OEM one in the middle. Um, but this last one looks kind of deceiving. It's it's it looks larger than uh, this middle cable, but it's not. It's just got a, it's got a thick outer layer of this braided shielding. So this shielding is taking up most of the space, not the actual wires inside. This cable here definitely has some thick wires inside for its power carrying wires. So also that wire that I used at the beginning, that short one, is also the Tron Smart cable, and it has that 20 gauge wire in it. So the shorter your cable. Uh, also, the less resistance it'll have and the less voltage drop, so the faster it'll charge. So that's just a general rule, but if you have like a 10-foot cable, it'll definitely charge slower than something like this 1-foot cable, but sometimes this 1-foot cable isn't very practical. So this is the same cable, but in 3 feet, and it, it does very well on all devices I've used. So let's go ahead and check out this 20-gauge this, uh, Tron Smart cable on these three devices. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the LG V10. So there we go, and let's go ahead and take a look at the current. So we're charging at 1.67 amps, so it's just as good as the original charge rate. That's about the maximum this phone's going to take uh, in this in this 5 volt uh, level. So it's not going to charge any faster unless we use a quick charge uh, adapter. So this cable does very well on the LG V10. Now we're going to go ahead and try it on the Nexus 7. So I think we already know what's going to happen here. Let's go ahead and check out the charge rate on that. So it's charging, of course, at that full charge rate, 1.12 amps, so it's doing pretty good. So, of course, that's what we expected. And last, let's go ahead and charge it on the USB power bank, and let's see how it holds up there. So let's go ahead and look at that current. So it's doing 1.8 amps, which is just about as good as it was in the beginning, 1.79, 1.8. So that's how good it was when we had that really short cable setup. So definitely, this cable is holding up very well with the USB charging bank. All right, guys, and that pretty much wraps it up for this one. So what we got out of this is the, the wire gauge in the cable definitely affects the charging rate. And these cheap cables that you might find on eBay, although they might look pretty cool, I mean, this cable looks really cool, um, It doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean it functions very well. So definitely, if you're ever shopping for cables on eBay, don't go for something like this. Don't for, go for the first search result that pops up. Make sure you search for a wire gauge with it, and it should be uh, ideally 22 or 20 gauge wire, and that will charge all your devices at their maximum charge rate. And this also works very well with Quick Charge 2.0 and 3.0. Um, I have another video that explains that, but again, if you are using a, a Quick Charge 2.0 technology, these cables operate a little bit differently under those circumstances because the voltage levels are higher. So this cable actually will charge at a pretty decent charge rate, even though it sucked in this video, it will charge at a pretty decent charge rate if you push a higher voltage through it. And we look at that in my uh, Qualcomm Quick Charge video. but. For most circumstances, I would definitely recommend if you're going to get a replacement cable, make sure it has the, at least it shows the wire gauge labeled somewhere on the package if you're going to buy it in a store or in the auction somewhere they state the wire gauge. Make sure you get a thick gauge wire. It definitely makes a difference night and day charge rates. And the OEM cables are definitely pretty good for the devices they come with, not necessarily all devices. You might buy a small de the, the device that doesn't draw, draw much current like this Nexus 7, and then you all, might go later on and buy a device like an LG V10, which can, has the capability of charging at nearly twice as much current, and that, doesn't, that does not necessarily mean this cable is going to work good for your LG V10. So OEM cables are generally pretty good for the devices that they come with, but not always for, they're not good for universally any device. If you want a cable that's going to ch charge all your devices at their fastest charging rate possible definitely just get a usb cable on ebay with a thick wire gauge so guys that pretty much wraps up for this one i hope you guys enjoyed it and like always have a good one